The Intel i7-4790K processor costs more at the start of 2020, 360 pounds, than it did when it was first released in mid-2014. As this graph illustrates, look, you could buy it for around 250 when it first came out in 2014. I actually bought a system, a 4790K system for two and a half thousand pounds about three or four months after the 4790K came out in around September 2014. So about three months after it came out, I would have probably paid around £255, 260 Well, plus the system builder's costs. So the price of the 4790K rose during the first year of its release and then it went to a new low before it's been trending higher ever since look at that 330 pound and its current price is even higher 360 and this is for the brand new one so what's the second hand one go for 269 269 that's more than it cost when it was released so even second hand used is cost more than it was released why well it's because of this single core performance it's a four core eight thread you can well you can disregard the threads because it's the cores that count <clears throat> and basically it illustrates a fact that processors have not been getting more powerful all that's happened really is an increase in the number of cores as the 4790k illustrates it was a trend already in motion into 2014 but it's persisted for near six years since you know the 4790k is a great processor which i've got installed on this system in fact i've got it overclocked uh, here we go so i've got it set to 47 4, 4600 and its base multiplier for turbo is 4400 megahertz so I've got it times 46 instead of 44, which is about a 4.5% overclocking. I have overclocked it to 4700 in the past, but it doesn't run stable. But it does run stable at 4600. Um, basically, 4700 would be stable for about two or three hours before it crashes. Of course, if you're going to overclock higher, then you have to increase the voltage which is what increases the temperature, which is what results in a blue screen of death. And here's this four cores, eight threads of the processor. So basically there's not been much increase in processing power on the single cores because they tend to overheat. And so most of these, look at them, none of these processors like maybe 15 percent above the 4790k in performance like for instance let's take the uh let's take the k intel's flagship the 9900ks what percentage increases it on the second thread 19 percent 90 percent in six years that's nothing are you gonna pay all that extra cost for a new system two grand for just a 90% increase in performance on the single core. Yes, multi-core, because it's got eight cores and 16 threads, which boosts it to 21,000 against 11,000. But the thing is here, yeah, the most important factor, criteria for most applications, i.e. gaming and productivity tasks, is the performance of the single core. Multi-core is only really important for specialized tasks that you probably won't do often such as rendering and encoding videos then multi-core comes in to some extent uh, even then for multi-core you basically top out around 12 cores so even then there's no point you know going for 32 core or higher even like that's not oh that's wrong 128 yeah, so the epoch is 64 core 128 thread. 
So like I say, the top out around 12, it's overkill once you go over 12, you're just wasting money. Like, you know, especially if it results in a drop in the performance of the single core, like Intel's 1090 980XC, which is a dud, $1,500. And look, what's the performance on the 4790K? 2708. Sorry about that. Oh, seven percent. I'm gonna spend fifteen hundred dollars just for the processor for a seven percent boost. Yeah, it's got more cores and than the four seven ninety k, but it's overkill. And that is the reason why you know an old four seven ninety k processor costs three sixty because it's still good in twenty twenty as the Passmark single core and and Cinebent sing, single core benchmarks illustrate. No, this is four three five on the Cinebench twenty, and look, the 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 difference is marginal. For instance, let's take the highest. I think this is the highest. The Ryzen nine three nine fifty X costs seven hundred eighty six dollars, but you're gonna have to pay for the everything else that goes with it, and that gives you nineteen percent performance. On single core, yeah, you can sal salivate around the multi core, which obviously is substantial because he's only got four cores the 4790 against 3950 16, yeah, three times. But you're not gonna see that in real performance. Real in real performance, it's gonna be somewhere in between single core and the multi core because after about four cores that basically it is a greatly diminishing return on having more cores four cores you should aim for as the minimum which is what the 4790k has so it's still a good processor in 2020 because he's got four cores eight threads which are of less important more it's mostly a sales gimmick the threads that's why it costs more it costs more than all of these processes the ryzen's you know, 2600X, 1900X, 2700X, it's because even though they've got more cores, single core performance is rubbish. Why is that? It's because of the clock speed. Basically, the clock speeds have stagnated for a good eight years. It, it, they don't seem to be able to go over five gigahertz. You know, the, I can overclock the this 4790K to 4700, but it won't run stable. But 4600 stable ways, that's basically where we, where all these processes are. They're not going to, they're around that, they're around 3.9 to 4.7 and you might get a 4.9 here and there. That's why there's much, not much increase in performance because they are unable to cross the 5 gigahertz clock. And plus the 4790K was, is a great processor for overclocking. Right, if I... Spent some money on a cooler, a water cooler, and you know, and up the temperature, up the voltage, and as long as the temperature didn't go above, you know, 75 degrees or stayed around 70 at max when it's on full turbo. Let's see how I put it on there. Let's run Cinebench and put the processor on max under max load. Okay. So that's the current CPU usage. I'll run, uh, I have to run multi-core, isn't it? So running multi-core and putting the CPU on the max load and you'll watch all the cores and, well, the threads as well ramp up to 100% and the f fans are kicking in. Yeah, we're at 100% now. 4600 megahertz. Benching Cinebench 20, 100%. What's the temperature? 38 degrees, nothing. Yeah, that's obviously gonna rise to around 60. Yeah, 62, you jump straight to 62. But that illustrates why you're paying more for an old 4790K than a modern processor. It's because A is clocked at, you can overclock it to 4600 easily and B, it runs cool, <laughs> they're well designed.
Well, it's the new one, they might be small uh, nanometer scale, but they're not as good. So here we go. Also, if you're thinking about doing the same with modern processors like the Intel's 9900KS, which on face value has the potential to be overclocked by 10%, maybe. The only problem is they've been the best processors. They've been them. So actually what you're going to buy for $780, you're not going to be able to overclock it. It's not going to be stable because they've took out the ones that can be overclocked, for instance, to 5.2 gigahertz in that region and they sell them separately at double the price what a rip off so you so that's another reason not to upgrade so if you got an old 4790k don't be bamboozled by the multi-core thread benchmarks that the you know the, the system sellers try and set you up for because you're not going to notice much of an increase in performance once you've upgraded you'll think what it's virtually, you know, running productivity stuff and gaming is not much different. Maybe you should just look to upgrade your GPU card rather than the whole system. That might make a bigger difference for gaming. But overall, I don't think you're going to see any performance going for these high-end processors unless you do heavy-duty tasks like rendering or encoding videos, something that actually utilises the cores even then you going above 12 is going to be likely overkill which is why i would rate the 3900x is probably the best process in terms of value for money in early early 2020 it's 12 cores it beats 4790k by a small percentage and i'm sure you can upgrade it uh you could probably you could probably overclock it to 3000 so about 19 percent and it's got excellent multi-core and it's not overkill like the like this one this daft one you know the people pay obviously that's for servers not desktops if you put that into a desktop you would not see any performance increase maybe for video rendering but four thousand four hundred dollars uh, this is probably the best processor at the moment. There is the 3950X that everybody is fawning over online. 16 cores, 32 threads, but it's overkill. You're paying 50% more for something that you're not going to see the benefit of, even though the multi-core bench is not that good. Not that much higher, look. Tinny bench. Even the benchmark's not showing it much higher. Single core, yeah, there's an improvement. Yeah, but what is there? No, it's not. Yeah, there is on Cinebench, but not on Passmark. So it's not really worth it going for the 3950X, which is why I would rate the 3900X. But if you've got a 4790K system, an old system, you want to think carefully before getting a new system. Because getting anything less than a... 3900X you're not going to notice the difference basically and it's not really worth going for 24 core 32 core because there's nothing that's going to make use of it efficiently even rendering once you go over 12 you basically max out on what the software is going to call on so that's why a 4790K old 2014 version a vintage four core eight thread costs more than a lot of these junk processes are look 360 pounds in the UK brand new 270 second hand that's more than it cost new it's because there's not been much increase in uh, performance of the single cores due to the lack of increase in clock cycles for 4.7 turbo overclock is is better than many of these you know better than many of these Ryzen's that's why they've got a sub performance so until they're able to break the 5 gigahertz barrier without demanding something like liquid nitrogen 
you know, I think it's going to take artificial intelligence on the CPUs for parallel pro execution of programs because at the moment, because programs are written uh, sequentially to execute sequ sequentially, not in parallel, which means it's going to be up to some kind of AI system on the chip that executes programs in parallel. Until then, there's not much point in going over eight cores. Yeah, you could maybe future proof with 12 cores, but the idiots online going to going for 32 core 64 thread for two thousand dollars they're not going to see any benefits of that none just wasting money same with the 24 core and the 10980 xe that's garbage look at it its performance is less is what well, what is it it's nothing four seven nine seven percent and this is and these figures aren't even the overclocked you know the 4790k this is not overclocked 4790k so for seven percent you're going to get a brand new system on a 10980 txe paying fifteen hundred dollars for the cpu maybe four and a half thousand dollars for the system for a seven percent increase because that's what you're going to probably experience most of the time not going to know it's not going to be noticeable you know the graphics card is going to do the gaming and your uh maybe for rendering will come in use but there's no not much point the only process that sticks out here is uh in terms of value for money is the 3900x everything else is is not going to make any it's going to not going to be worth it no, definitely not 3970x or 3960x or the 9900ks some and definitely not the 10980xe they're not worth what they're asking you know 780 dollars 1500 dollars for nothing you know i'll stick to the 4790k especially since it keeps going up in price i can imagine a year from now it'll be 500 pounds per chip Yeah, 360 now. It's gonna go whoop. Yeah, going up faster than Google stock price. 